me take you to the believer. Inna ashab al jannat al yawma fi shughul fakihun. I'm going to spend some time on this ayah. There's no doubt about it, people. The companions of Jannah, may Allah make each and every one of us and all the Muslims and people from them. The people of Jannah, the companions of Jannah. Today, inna ashab al jannah al yawm today fi shughul fakihun. They are in very busy activities. They're doing all kinds of stuff. So if you imagine Jannah is going to be boring, I guess it's a really pretty place when you just sit there. You know, especially because I come from a Pakistani background, I have problems imagining Jannah. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why. Because in Pakistani culture, if you live in a really, really nice house, that means you have all this exotic crystal, handmade, crafted stuff in random places in your house that's supposed to be an obstacle course for normal human beings. So if you sit, you have to sit like, a, like, a, like you're almost like at gunpoint, like. <laughs> because if you enjoy yourself on a couch too much, you'll tip over something or break a crystal or the, the, you know, the goose thing that your mom bought or whatever. <laughs> you know, so you have to like really like, you know. And then when, when kids have too much fun, oh, the look you should see the mom give them. <laughs> like little Kareem is running around because his friend came over, but she can't yell at him in front of the guests. Because that's like haram. <laughs> so she does this like the angry look masked by the artificial smile, <laughs> captured with grinding teeth. And she says, Kareem, bete, can I talk to you in the kitchen? <laughs> it's so awesome. So when you, so when I think of like a nice place, I feel like I should be really uncomfortable here. <laughs> <laughs> but Quran says you're going to be in Jannah You're going to be doing all kinds of crazy activities I don't know, I should comment one more thing About my wonderful culture, Pakistan, I love Pakistan She said one more thing, you know what we do with kids? Make sure they're not happy <laughs> If a kid is having a great time He's like, yes, and he's playing with a toy The mom will come Sir, you insan a little bit for Can you be a human for a little while? Like, He's just being a kid. He's just happy. What? What do you want him to like? Become a librarian right now? Like what? Why are you so? <laughs> Let him be a kid. God, this is totally the exa exact opposite of Arab kids. Arab kids can do whatever they want. Whatever they want. I mean, seriously, you guys, you Arabs. I mean, man, your kids are afraid of nothing. <laughs> nothing. You can't tell an Arab kid, I'm going to tell your dad. He goes, okay, I'll give you the number. <laughs> like, he's like, he's like, <laughs> he's like, uh, nothing. Anyway, anyway, I got to get back to this. So, <laughs> the people of Jannah are going to be in all kinds of activities. Shogunin, busy activities. They're just hanging out. They're doing. They're having a party over here. They're playing a game over there. And then he says, "Fakihun," and they're going to be overjoyed, laughing, having the best time of their life. Fakiha is actually a fruit, but a tasty fruit. When you eat it, it puts a smile on your face. And so Allah says, these activities are constantly going to be making you smile. There's not going to be a single activity where you go. Ah. You know, when you play games at home or whatever, eventually you just go, oh, "Okay, I, I, guys, that's enough." That's enough. There's a moment where you're really enjoying it and then it just kind of dies down. You know, and you don't know when to stop and you realize it's really gone too far and you're really bored out of your mind now, really should stop. You're just waiting for the first person to leave the party. So you really don't want to be the first one. So you wait for them to leave. Okay, I think I'm going to get out of here. You know, that's what you do. But in Jannah, it's just going to be a party and people are just happy on top of happy, on top of happy. Fi shughul in faqihun. You know why? Because their book is overlooked. You know, نَكْتُبُ مَا قَدَّمُوا وَأَثَارَهُمْ What does Allah say about the people of Jannah? حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا his, his audit is easy. Allah doesn't even check it item by item. And in this dunya, activities are supposed to exhaust, but in Jannah it's going to be beautiful. هُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُهُمْ Uh-oh, this part is a little PG-13, but I'll tell you anyway. <laughs> they and their spouses, but so, azwaj could also mean groups they belong with. 
people they want to hang out with. But this is actually referring to spouses. They and their spouses are going to be fi ghilalin. They are going to be in shades. Alal araiki on top of couches. This is actually, if some of you are familiar, like Victorian kind of furniture, old school furniture, where you have beds and you have bed posts and you have these curtains that drape over the bed, making it a little, you know, exotic or you know whatever. That's where they're going to be chilling with their with their girl. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. And Allah says muttaqiun. They're going to be chill, leaning back, relaxing, but not sleeping. A bed is for sleeping, but they're not sleeping. They're not sleeping because in Jannah there is no what? There's no sleep. Allah doesn't want you to miss a moment of joy, a moment of happiness. By the way, this scene would make no sense if you don't know what I'm talking about in dunya. I don't have to spell the rest of this out. Goodbye, I'm going to move forward. Okay, lahum fiha faqihatun wa lahum ma yadda'un. In it, meaning even sitting in bed. You get hungry when you're sitting in bed. What happens? Where do you go? The kitchen. What Allah says, they will have in it, those beds, around, right around the beds, they'll have all kinds of fruit. It's right there. You don't even have to get up. And you can eat in bed. <laughs> Sisters don't appreciate that, it's okay. You can eat in bed and the strawberry can leak over on the chadar that you just got washed. And it doesn't stain. <laughs> That's Jannah. That's Jannah. I tell you, that is, that's what I want in Jannah. I want to eat on a bed. <laughs> and I want to eat the greasiest food with the most solid stains. I'm going to like... <laughs> Nothing! <laughs> they're going to have all kinds of fruit. And they're going to have whatever orders they place. Whatever they ask for. You're in Jannah. Allah gave you everything. You're like, I don't know, I feel bad, I should ask. We should just have some taqalluf, you know? You don't go to somebody's house, they take care of you, they give you food, they give you like kebabs and chicken and whatever. You're like, do you have any ketchup? <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's such a Batamese thing to do. You know, I do it personally, actually I do it. But uh, it's such a bad thing to do. But in Jannah, there is no hesitation. You can actually ask Allah, Ya Allah, I was thinking, uh, there was this ayah where you mentioned uh, birds. <laughs> can I just kind of, yeah, sure, here. <laughs> and it just, it arrives to you. You're being served. Every, everything you can order, everything you can ask for, it's just immediate room service. You don't even have to call zero and wait or nothing. <laughs> this is the scene in Jannah. And then, it just gets epic on top of epic. All these rewards combined, are pale in comparison. لا شيء فوق هذا سلام قولا من رب الرحيم. Salam, salutation, peace, some kind of peace. It's, by the way, it doesn't say as-salam. It says salamun, which means it is unknown. This kind of salam is not known. It's not the kind of salam you can ever know. Not until you get there. This is the word قولا من رب الرحيم, a word from a master who's always been loving, merciful. By the way, those who made it to Jannah, we have, been, we have seen some people right now who are worthy of Jannah in the surah. Messengers are worthy of Jannah. Their few followers are worthy of Jannah. The one who was killed, remember him? Worthy of Jannah. Did they go through an easy life or a hard life? They went through an extremely hard life. And Allah says He's always been Rabbin Rahim, a Rabb who's always been merciful and loving. He made all those difficulties easy for them, even in dunya. Even in dunya. He's the one who facilitated the path for them. Those who struggle for us, we open up doorways for them. We guide them to our different multiple pathways. Allah is the one who made the hardest struggles easy for people. He made the fire cool for Ibrahim alayhi salam. You know? The fire doesn't get cool on its own. Allah does that. So he was always, and so now he says salam. I was the one supporting you all along. I was rooting for you all along. There's nothing more that can be said. It's so perfect that the conversation about Jannah just came to an end because where do you go from there? Where do you, you can't go anywhere from here. So now we're back in the scene that was hit pause on. Where, where did we pause? No, in resurrection. And they said, this is what Ar-Rahman promised. And the messengers were speaking the truth. And they're all going to be brought before. And they were told, today nobody will be wronged. You will only be given what you, were, what you worked for. Remember that? 
And then immediately, you know, you guys watch movies. No, of course you don't. You're in Houston. You're so religious. But some of you who are from, like, Oklahoma who watch movies, <laughs> the, you know, there's, this, there's two scenes happening. And you go into one scene, you cut out, you go to the other scene, then you cut out, you go back to the first scene. Now we're going to go back to that first scene where meanwhile, you were being told you're only going to be given what you were, what you worked for. Now he says, وَمْتَازُ الْيَوْمَ أَيُّهَا الْمُجْرِمُونَ can separate yourselves today, criminals. Be, be distinct today, criminals. You cannot mix with people anymore. Why did he say that? Because among them may have been people, خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ He feared Ar-Rahman in the unseen. In this dunya, you couldn't tell the believer from the disbeliever sometimes. Maybe some people had iman inside of them but never told anybody. They only obeyed Allah and worshipped Allah in private without ever letting anybody know. Nobody will ever know them except Allah. And today on Judgment Day, when the entire nation is raised, Allah says, separate yourselves. And some people are surprised, what, why is he going on a nice side? And they won't even know why. Only Allah knows those people. Criminals, separate yourselves. Now, as Allah will speak to them, Allah is also speaking to them, He gives them His final speech. Alam a'had ilaykum ya bani Adam. Didn't we take a promise from you, children of Adam? Allah ta'budu shaitan, that you should not be worshipping shaitan. Actually, the promise was to not obey shaitan or to not listen to shaitan. But here it takes another form. And Allah says that you won't be worshipping shaitan. What are we learning? That to Allah, when somebody listens to shaitan and gives up all hopes of guidance and ignores all pathways to truth, then that is no different than the worship of shaitan. That is the worship of shaitan. إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُمِينٌ no doubt about it, he is to you an obvious enemy. You know what we're learning here that's also really, really important, really, really important, is that when you refuse to use your mind to understand the world around you and history and revelation, and you, you block yourself from all three of those, then you are at the mercy of shaitan. Then you don't even know it, but you're worshipping him. That's what he wants. He wants the human being not to be able to use his mind properly. So he never finds his way. Because you can't find your way if you don't use your mind. Didn't I tell you to worship me? هذا صراط مستقيم. That is a that is a straight path. Wait, this is the first time straight path came up. When did straight path come up? Do you remember? Right in the beginning, messengers and the Prophet ﷺ are all committed to a. Okay, this is so beautiful. Because when, they were, when we were told that they, are, they were committed to a straight path, some people might have thought, yeah, wonderful. They're committed to a straight path. How am I supposed to do that? And their straight path is so hard. Didn't I describe it as really hard? It gets harder and harder and harder. How is a normal person supposed to do that? And Allah at the end of it all says, actually, what I asked for the messengers, I asked you for so much less. All I asked you was worship me. This is the straight path. This is the straight path. There was nothing more. I didn't ask you for much. Messengers came. Allah says, Allah, Allah wants to lighten your burden. He wants you to have an easier life. That's what He says. Allah wants ease for you. He doesn't want difficulty for you. He didn't put any burden or constriction or discomfort in the religion for you. You know who makes religion uncomfortable? People do. People do. Allah makes ease in the religion. We make difficulty in the religion. I've learned that the hard way. Man, I'm so grateful for my, I consider my most valuable risk in this world is my students and my teachers. I consider them my most valuable risk. And my, my, my teachers, including especially Dr. Akram Madhubi, may Allah protect him. He's, Wallahi al -Azim. every time I study with him, every time I sit with him, I go through a hadith with him, I go through ayat with him. I feel like I just took shahada. There are things I've learned, I thought I knew about Islam my entire life, and I sit there and I learn them from him, and I'm like, whoa, I did not know that. And it just makes sense, and it's so much easier, and people made it so ugly and difficult, you know? And I, I'll tell you about Dr. Akram later. Any, anybody know about Dr. Akram? Hmm? Like three people? Okay, good. You should, you should know about Dr. Akram. Write that name down, Akram Nadwi. A-K-R-A-M, Akram. Nadwi. That's how you say it in Siri. Nadwi. N A D A W Y. Or N A D W I also. Okay. Anyway, just worship me. It's simple. 
This is a straight path. That's all there is to it. وَلَقَدْ أَضَلَّ مِنْكُمْ جِبِلًّا كَثِيرًا He was certainly able to misguide a huge population. الْعَدَدَ الْكَثِيرَ الْجِبِلِ A huge mountainous quantity of you he was able to mislead. أَفَلَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْقِلُونَ Why were you never people that used to think? Why didn't you ever exercise your minds? This is taking us back to the three things we should be thinking about. I won't repeat them anymore. You guys know them now. Why didn't you ever exercise your mind? How did shaitan get to you? That's why I said shaitan's job is to stop you from thinking. Yeah? And by the way, this idea that he was able to get so many is not the first time we're learning in the surah. Allah already said, Ya hasratan ila al-ibad ma yaatihim al-rasul. What a tragedy for people. Every time messengers come, they make fun of them. Who inspires them to make fun of messengers? Shaitan. وَمَا يَأْتِيهِم مِّنْ آيَةٍ مِّنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ إِلَّا كَانُوا عَنْهَا مُعْرِضِينَ Not a single miracle comes to them. They continue to ignore it. Who tells them to ignore it? Shaitan. He's always been there. You could fight him. It's easy. Just use your brain and you can fight him. Just use your mind properly and you can fight him. But submit to your desires and submit to your animal self and you're going to worship him. That's what you're going to do. So this, this now, أَفَلَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْقِلُونَ Why weren't you people that used to think? It's so powerful to me that Allah is saying the road to Jannah is for people who think. And today in, Muslim, in the Muslim world, we don't emphasize thinking. We ask people to just do and not think. And the Qur'an complains from the beginning to the end, why don't you think? People are being dragged into Jahannam and they're saying, لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ أَوْ نَعْقِلُوا if we only heard and we thought, we understood, we wouldn't be here. You know, we, we, our job is to become people of thought. This is actually, that's all I want to do. That's all I want to do is just to, if I could encourage myself, my family, Muslims, to just think about the word of Allah. Think about their life. Think about what they're doing. Just think, just think. With a clear mind. Everything can change. Everything can change. Allah says these ayat لِقَوْمٍ يَعْقِلُونَ For people that are trying to think. These are ayat that are beneficial for people who try to think. In other words, if you don't try to think, this is of no benefit to you. This is what we must become. Unfortunately, now we've reduced ourselves to a culture. It's so deteriorated that when some child asks a question, why did Allah say that? How come this is this way? Why do we have to pray five times? Why do we have to do this? Why do we have... Because he's thinking. He's thinking, so he asked a question. And what do we do? Astaghfirullah, tawbah, 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 tawbah. You know, like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on, dude. This is an opportunity for you to engage these kids. We're supposed to be asking questions. We're supposed to be answering questions. This is the way of learning. We're not supposed to discourage questions. Questions are the, way, are the road to opening up minds. This is, I mean, it's a, it's a subject on its own, but I want you to understand, هَذِهِ جَهَنَّمُ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُعَدُونَ This is the hell that you have all been promised. Was the hellfire promised to them? Yeah. يَقُولُونَ مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعَدْ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ They say, when is this promise going to happen? Well, here it is. You asked for the promise, right? Here you have it. Have it your way. إِسْلَوْهَ الْيَوْمْ Throw yourselves into it today. بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْفُرُونَ Because of the denial you used to do all along. By the way, throwing yourselves, being cast into Jahannam is like being cast into prison, yes? Which means this is the second prison. The first prison was? Chain, refuse to think. Remember that one? When you refuse to think there, you get this Jahannam over here. That's again the idea of thought. Dunya, the dunya prison and then the Akhirah prison. الْيَوْمَ نَخْتِمُ عَلَىٰ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ Today, we will put a seal on their mouths. Their mouths will not be able to say anything. Do you remember the section, section 4, in which they didn't use their minds properly? They refused to think. When they were first told, why don't you have taqwa, they had no answer. When you give them all kinds of miraculous evidence, they ignored it. When you told them to spend, they gave the worst answer. So they're, the best of it, they have no answer. And the worst of it, they gave terrible answers. Which means their mouths no longer deserve to be used. Their mouth is sealed. وَتُكَلِّمُونَ أَيْدِيهِمْ Their hands start talking to us. وَتَشْهَدُ أَرْجُلُهُمْ And their feet start testifying. بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Of the things they used to earn. You know what the hands testify. Other place in the Qur'an. لِمَا شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا 
Why are you testifying against us? This guy, I own this body right now. Allah has given me, I rent this body right now. Free charge. Judgment day comes, and Allah Azza wa resurrects this body, but it's no longer under my control. So I try to move my mouth, doesn't move. Then this is enabled to speak, and the legs are enabled to speak. And they start complaining to Allah, Ya Allah, you created me and me, and everything you create submits to you, but you temporarily gave this guy control. And because he had control, he made me disobey you. The fetal say, he made me disobey you. And this day I disobeyed you this way, I'm so sorry. And I disobeyed you again, but I didn't have a choice because you gave him control. And you're standing there going, because there's no worse testimony than yourself. There was nobody, no, no one's a better witness to what you and I did than our own hands and our feet. I mean, that's pretty hardcore evidence. You know, previously we learned that if you're going to be thrown into a prison, the crime should be proven. لَقَدْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلُ عَلَىٰ أَكْثَرِهِمْ Then they're thrown in prison. At the end of the surah, we're learning that again. If they're going to be thrown into prison, the crime should be proven. How do you prove it? Who are the witnesses? You yourself are a witness. كَفَى بِنَفْسِكَ الْيَوْمَ عَلَيْكَ شَهِيدًا Today you're enough as a witness against your own self. May Allah Azza protect us from that testimony. Now, وَلَوْ نَشَاءَ By the way, that's judgment day. But even now, even now, we're back to this world again. وَلَوْ نَشَاءَ لَطَمَسْنَا عَلَىٰ أَعْيُنِهِمْ We would wipe out their eyes. We could wipe out their eyes. فَاسْتَبَقُوا sirat. Then they would be competing to find the path. فَأَنَّا يُبْصِرُونَ Then how could they see? This is a strange statement. You have to think about what it means. Let me translate it again for you. Had we wanted, we would have obliterated, wiped out their eyes. Then they would have competed towards the path. They would have raced towards the path. But then how could they see? Or how would they see? Let me tell you what this impl implies. You need to understand the cancer of the worst disbeliever. You know the one who's covered from every side that we keep talking about? You know what his cancer is? He's not going to believe. But I did tell you eventually he will believe. Does anyone remember what I said about eventually he will believe? When? When he sees punishment. This one will not believe until he sees punishment. So now, this disbeliever, Allah shows him punishment. He takes out his eyes. He wipes out his eyes. Now that he sees the punishment, He's ready to believe. So he'll compete towards the path. Oh, what's the point now? You can't know where to go. You understand? So this is actually describing how hopeless they are until they see the punishment. The other way to look at it, some ulama have looked at it, and I find that appealing too, is that, you know, if you really want an excuse, that there was no reason for you to come to guidance, there was no way you could have understood. Okay, maybe you're not ed educated, so you don't know about history. Maybe you didn't know about any prophet, so you don't know about what comes from above. Possible. It's possible I have no access to an education in history, and I have no access to access in revelation. But there's one thing I still have access to. What is that? The world around me. I could see the truth around me, the creation around me. I could have at least, you know, uh, you know pondered on that. Allah says, had I just wiped their eyes out? Had I wiped their eyes out? Then even if they tried to compete towards the path, they wouldn't have been able to see. Maybe then they would have had an excuse. Maybe then. Because they could say, how could they see? But they don't have an excuse. They have fully functioning eyes. وَلَوْ نَشَاءُ And had we wanted, لَمَسَخْنَاهُمْ عَلَى مَكَانَتِهِمْ We could have mutilated their bodies where they stand. We could have broken their arms and messed up their faces. And ripped off their ears, etc., etc. Where they stand, and they wouldn't be able to move forward, and they wouldn't be able to come back. Allah is saying, "I don't have to wait till Judgment Day. I can take you out right now." And you know, He said before He could take them out with one blow, but now He's saying, "You know, there are other options. I could turn you blind and then start ripping your body apart piece by piece. I could do that. Then see what happens to you." Because you keep saying, oh, we're not going to come back again. Yeah, you're not going to come back from that one. You won't come back from that one. So you know what I find remarkable about this? This, wallahu a'lam, seems to me is Allah's way of responding to the threats. You know the messengers were threatened? If you don't stop, we're going to stone you to death or torture you in some terrible, terrible way. Oh, you think you can, you're the only one who can issue threats? I can give threats too. 
And they don't have to wait till the akhirah. They don't have to wait till the afterlife. I can give you a threat right now. And so he says he could take out their eyes or obliterate their faces or mutilate them and they won't be able to come back from it. And finally in this ayah, the, my favorite ayah of this entire surah, I think. وَمَن نُعَمِّرْهُ نُنَكِّسْهُ فِي الْخَلْقِ أَفَلَا يَعْقِلُونَ And whoever we would give old age to, we would start breaking them down in creation. In the previous ayah, Allah said, He might mutilate your bodies, yes? He might mutilate their bodies. But you don't have to wait to believe that He might mutilate your bodies. Your bodies are falling apart as you age anyway. A sign of that eventual mutilation is already happening every day as your body deteriorates as you age older and older and older. Whoever we give old age, we start reversing them in their creation. Imam al alusi said something so beautiful about this. It's always stuck in my head for years. I think I studied it like 15 years ago. He said that when a child is little, he does this. Uh, always looking where? Kids are like this and their necks are like this. You ever notice that? They're always looking up, trying to climb something, you know, pull something down, wanting to be picked up. Just up, 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 up. Then a man gets really old. What happens to his back? And he's always looking where? A child was looking towards his growth. And a man is looking towards his final home all the time. He's looking at the dirt all the time. That's where he's headed. Allah has already made it easy for him to remember. He bends his back down. He starts deteriorating him in creation. Subhanallah. Afala yaqidun. Why don't they know? Another way of looking at this ayah that's been very powerful for me to appreciate is that as people get much older, they actually start developing habits like children. People can get easily upset as they get older. They can get more dependent, their health deteriorates, so you, they can't go and clean themselves or dress themselves, etc. They need help with that. They can't feed themselves anymore. They can't go around themselves, which is the same disability as what? Children. Children. They become like that, and that's the age they reach. So he returns to a state where he knows nothing after having known something. Dementia hits, you start forgetting stuff, you don't know the words anymore. You stutter in your speech, which used to be the case when? When you were little. Baby, don't you remember? Mm -mm. You know? That's your uncle, he's scary, etc. And then you meet an old man, and he forgets. I met a scholar, it scared me, it reminded me of this ayah, subhanAllah. I was traveling in a, in a taxi with him, um, and he said, Bita, how are you? I said, I'm very good, alhamdulillah. How's it going? MashaAllah, where are you from? I said, Dallas. A minute later, he goes, Bita, how are you? Alhamdulillah. How's it going? MashaAllah. Where are you from? Dallas. A minute later, Bita, how are you? Alhamdulillah. How's it going? MashaAllah. Where are you from? Dallas. Oh, MashaAllah. Yeah, I like Dallas. Have we, have we met before? Yeah, I think so we have. I didn't like startle him and say, you just asked me that. But he has a very severe case of like, just immediate short-term memory loss. You know, just every five minutes we had the same conversation. And by the way, who has that? Who does that over and over again? Kids do that. Kids do that. Abba, can I have some chocolate? Can I have some chocolate? Can I have some chocolate? There's just like a... It's on the loop. There's an app for that or something. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks for watching these videos. If you'd like to continue to support Quran Weekly, please click the link in this video.